Hello, it's Parm King, the Dungeon Master for Legends of Barovia, a Curse of Straw campaign that we are streaming on Foundry. And today I'm going to be talking about ambient sound. I've had a couple of requests of how do I put ambient sound in my game and where do I get my ambient sound and how do I put it all together? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, first of all, I think it's important to describe to you how I see and what I think about in terms of ambient sound. For me, ambient sound sets the tone, the, the background, the feeling and atmosphere where our characters are going to be in, whether it's a theater of the mind map or a battle map. Ambient sound is not going to be overpowering. It just kind of sits in the background. It's a, another way to color the scene for me. Ambient sound it falls into two categories. The most common category for me is the sound that you would expect to hear based on the location that you're in. If you're in a tavern, you would expect to hear some glasses clanking and maybe some, some tavern folks speaking among themselves quietly or maybe a little music in the corner. If you're outside and it's a blizzard, you probably want to hear the wind and, and or the rain if you're outside the rain. Or in this case, a forest. I've got a forest. Uh, scene here, a sound that we're going to record. Now, before we get started, I want to, to point out to be cognizant and aware of copyrighted material to make sure you follow the law and, and get permissions when copyright material is being used. Uh, barring that, ambient sounds can be found all over the internet, especially on YouTube. There's tons of recordings of just forested nature sounds or blizzards or wind or fireplace sounds. Now, when we're using ambient sounds, we don't need to record a lot of it. You don't need hours of it. You don't even need tens of minutes of it. You need a minute to two minutes because in Foundry, we're just going to loop it. Now, one of the things that's important to consider when we're playing in Foundry is both file size, bandwidth, CPU, and RAM. So there are, if you're self-hosting in Foundry, there are two things you need to consider about the computer that you're using because you're going to be using RAM on your computer and your CPU load. So you want to make sure that your file sizes, your pictures and your sound are, are small file sizes, uh, that you're not using a lot of CPU load or RAM on your computer. The second thing to consider is the kind of bandwidth you're using. Remember, you're hosting, you're acting as a server, people are uh, connecting into your computer. And so your upload speeds have some things to, to consider and smaller file sizes are always better. Smaller or compressed is better in this case. Now for me, I, I am playing on a laptop. I use Forge, which is a cloud-based service specifically for hosting Foundry. And it uh, just relieves all the headaches for me hosting the system, not to mention that I'm running on a laptop. But be that as it may, you should consider making sure that your file sizes are small and compressed. Now, because we're using ambient size sounds and we're just looping it, we don't need big, big file sizes. So let's go ahead and record one. I'll show you how I record it. We're gonna just listen to a sample here. This is one sample that I found of some forest. Let's just take a listen. Now, one of the reasons that we don't need to record a lot of the forest sound is because it's just repetitive. It's some birds and some wind in the trees. Once in a while, there might be a particular bird sound or an animal in the background to capture, to kind of break up the monotony. But remember, this is going to be the background. It's just going to be kind of uh, not overpowering. It's almost subconscious for the players. It just kind of adds to the atmosphere. It's like lighting for me. Okay, so how do I record this sound? Well, I use a software. I'll put a link in the bottom called Audacity. It's free, and it's great software for recording sounds, whether you're using your microphone or on your computer. And the first thing you do when you install Audacity is you need to just tell Audacity where are you going to be recording this sound. And we're not recording from the microphone, we're recording from the computer. So we go to Edit and select Preferences, and you're going to select Devices. So devices here, we are selecting recording device is going to be the speakers. Now this might be a little bit different on your computer if you have a dedicated audio file or uh, maybe you're using a SPDIF or some kind of audio digital card or something like that. Make sure you're going to select the source which you would listen to your sound out your speakers uh, is you're going to be recording source. For, for me on my laptop, it's speakers real tick audio. Once you do that, we're pretty much ready to go. So go ahead and play the sound that you have. Here's the forest sound, and I'm just going to hit record on Audacity. And we're only going to record one minute of sound here. And you can record up to two minutes if you're recording ambient sound that has some variables in it, maybe an animal or a particular crow or something in there, and you want to capture that. 
you know, you can record up to two minutes, but usually one minute is just about right. Two minutes if there's going to be some more variables in the ambient sound. So we're at 30 seconds. Let's give ourselves another 30 seconds here. Ooh, there's, there's a different little sound in there. You can see that in the waveform, maybe like a woodpecker or something which is good, it kind of changes it up a little bit for people. Some great ambient sounds are blizzard, rain, light rain, hard rain, storms, lightning, tavern sounds. Uh, these are all great ambient sounds to use. So we're coming up on one minute here. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop here in just a second. See if I can time that just right. Boom, 58, 59, one minute. Oh, just a little short of one minute. I'm going to stop the music in the background. And we're going to go and save this. So when we save uh, in Audacity, we're going to go File, Export as MP3. And we're going to call this um, Forest Birds. Okay. I'm recording in MP3 format. Quality is 96 kilobytes. Now, we're not looking for super high quality sound. Remember, this is ambient sound. It's going to be in the background. So, you know, we're not listening to, you know, something on a nice Macintosh system with, with awesome speakers. It's just ambient sound in the background. So 96 kilohertz, kilobytes is going to be fine in an MP3 for format. And we're also concerned about making sure those file sizes don't get too big. So we hit save there and hit OK. It, there's a little meta tag that pops up if you want to go ahead and fill out your artist name and track. I don't usually just do that. Just an ambient sound. And there, it's done. Now, if we look at our folder here, let me just bring up a folder with our ambient sounds. Hold on for you. I just want to show you something over here in our ambient sounds. We're going to take a look at this. It was Forest Birds. So let's just take a look at it. You can see the file size is only 700. Let's just open this up so you can see the properties a little easier. So the, oh, that was the wrong one. We want to do forest birds, properties. There we go. So we can see it's 90, it's only 700, 700K. Uh, um, so uh, it's a small file size and that's all we're going to need. And it's just going to be looping in the background. So this is going to take a huge load off your computer. It's going to take a load off your players but they're gonna have this nice ambient sound in the background. So let's hit okay, let's put it in our game. So we can close this down and let's bring up four, I mean, sorry, um, Foundry. So I have a scene here um, that we're gonna put the sound that we just recorded into. Now, this is a theater of the mind map. I make, I love using theater of the mind maps because for role playing, I have made some videos on it. I'll put some links in there if you're interested in them. This is just a forest scene here. I got a little bit of fog and uh, color going on in there to give it atmosphere. Again, lighting and sound together, that's what creates the atmosphere for the players. Now, if you go to the left-hand side of the screen, we are going to go ahead and put in, select the icon down here. That's the um, that's the uh, little note here. Uh, I think those are uh, quarter notes or eighth notes. I haven't played music in quite some time, embarrassed to say. Click on the speaker in the center, and you're going to just put this sound, and we're going to envelop the entire scene for the ambient sound. When I'm doing ambient sounds, I usually do global, because no matter where they are in the scene, whether it's a battle map and they're outside, or whether they're in a dungeon, or they're using theater of the mind, it's just global sound. No matter where you are in the scene, you're going to hear the sound. Now, if, however, you want to use volume easing, and this is for ambient sounds that you might want, like, for instance, let's say you're in a, a scene with a campfire and you just want the campfire, when they get close to the campfire, to get louder as they get close to the campfire. You can put in volume easing and, and shrink the radius down to where it's the campfire so when they get closer to the campfire, it becomes louder. I don't do that too often. Usually just my ambient sound is, is in the background. No matter where you're at, that's what you're going to hear. Um, I move my my sound down just a little bit. Um, I don't like it blasting. Remember, this is not overpowering the scene. And we're pretty much done. That's it. Oh, we got to put the sound file in there. So we click on sound file. We're going to go to music folder. And I'm going to choose from my computer. We recorded that forest birds. Let's hit open. And there it is. It's loaded up successfully into, uh, into Forge. And I hit select. Update sound. 
and we're done. So let's take a look at it and listen to it from our player's perspective. So this is a theater of the mind map. I just have a random token in here and click on it. And there we go. That's the ambient sound playing in the background. Now what's important about ambient sound, a couple of little things I want to point out. If you click on the, uh, the music audio playlist icon on the right side, you'll notice that you'll have some volume controls. The volume control for ambient sound which is the one that we put in the map is this one here. And you can control that and your players can control it as well. This sound is different from your playlist or your soundboard. Your soundboard and your playlist are, are different. Now I used to run ambient sounds from my playlist, but now I just run them in the map. I don't have to think about them. Um, and I'll do a separate video about playlists and soundboards and sound effects. This is just for, for, for ambient sounds. And that's it. We're, we're, our players are there. They're in the forest, maybe they're on a way to a cave or a ruin or whatever, but that little bit of sound, for me, creates a great atmosphere. And now you can do your role playing or your scene or, or in there. Well, I hope you like this video. I hope it was help helpful. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in other stuff about Foundry, Theater of the Mind, uh, battle maps, lighting. I've got quite a few videos uh, for you to watch. In addition, every Thursday we stream our Cursed Strahd here on YouTube. It's Thursday, 6 p.m. London time. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. This is Parm King, and may all your roles be critical 20.